right now the new scramble for Africa is on technology, it's on talent, and it's on market opportunity. FinTech is important because it cuts across all sectors of our economy. If you look at it, there's always money transfer in every sector. There's always transfer of value in every sector. Because if you go to the village, you can't start speaking to them about you've created rails for payments in China. They just want a rail that takes their tea to the market. My name is Munyin Tega. Um, I am the managing director at Tala, but as well I serve as uh, the, sub, uh, the secretary of the FinTech Association of Kenya. It's, it's essentially a coming together of the industry players, the industry leaders, and adjacent uh, industries that are supporting either supporting FinTech or working uh, with the FinTech uh, community. So basically, it, the formation around it was saying, how can you bring um, the fintech industry players together, from startups all the way to the established ones? How can they bring them together onto one platform where we are able to sort of harness, you know, experiences from what you've been building, uh, the challenges that you're facing, but more importantly, just create a collaborative environment with the different players and the stakeholders within the financial services uh, space. Fintech is important because it cuts across all sectors of our economy. If you look at it, there's always money transfer in every sector. There's always transfer of value in every sector. FinTech comes in to leverage on technology uh, to, for example, create velocity, velocity of money, <laughs> especially around industries that are inefficient in terms of how they exchange value. So it actually sits at the core of everything that we do uh, as, as, as a people uh, and as a market. And therefore, if we are able to leverage the technology aspect to be able to sort of create some efficiencies around how different value chains works, either in agriculture, in healthcare, in entertainment, education, you find that it touches all bits and it's able to solve certain very specific challenges that each industry is uh, is experiencing. The thing, the opportunity for us here then is how do you identify those challenges and how do you solve them? The new business models I'm seeing emerging is where. Initially, people were building things in sort of what you'd call silos. So you'd find payment businesses building payment platforms, lending businesses building lending platforms, and, and there's a savings business and insure tech and things like that. What we're seeing is a collapsing of these walls, where now there are players that are able now to create platforms that cut across different, uh, 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 not really industries, but different verticals of the fintech space. Therefore then, trying to see how can you be able to do things like creating a nexus between payments, lending and savings on one platform. And this speaks to the ability then to start developing, innovating around the user, not the technology. So before people were innovating mostly uh, on, on, on the basis of the technology that they're using or the, the problem that they're solving per se. But we're starting to see models where people are innovating around the user so that this is the same user that pays, that borrows, that saves, that wants to get into wealth investment and things like that. So seeing a collapsing of all those things into singular platforms that address different use cases for the same user. The opportunity is huge, yes, and it's huge in the sense that, of course, it's a nascent industry. Everybody wants to get in when before it blows up and everybody is saturated. So it's a nascent industry. We are looking at only around 10% coverage of digital financial services in Kenya, which is one of the leading markets and in digital financial services. So you might as well think that the rest of Africa is at below 5%. So you're already seeing an opportunity in terms of growth. So an investor would look at the multiply effect uh, in that sense. So, you know, when they do their math, they see in the next five years, uh, if I invest a dollar, it comes back at $5. But more importantly, we need to look at what is the other motivation as well. Africa as a continent has always been, you remember back in the day we studied about the scramble for Africa. And back in the day, it was about scramble for land, for oil, natural resources. Right now, the new scramble for Africa is on technology. It's on talent and it's on market opportunities. And in this sense, because they're not really tangibles as it were before 50, 100 years ago, it is about IP. So how can you become part of the IP that is being generated in this continent? Be part either of discovering it, nurturing it or monetizing it. So in that sense, then, when you look at it that way, then you see why investors would be really interested in investing in uh, fintech companies in, in Africa. There are very many challenges that we see in Africa, basic challenges. 
even before we start speaking to complex technology uh, systems and platforms, we've got very basic challenges in Africa. One, access to financial services. It's still at the lowest level. Yes, we've got MPESA that allows you to move money from here to there, but does it allow you to save? Does it allow you to borrow when you need it at a convenient way and in the right price? Because that speaks to financial inclusion. So that is one. Number two, the inefficient market inefficiencies. Simple things like how do we get produce to the market quickly? How do you get paid quickly? How does the government get services to the people quickly? How do you, how are you able to get your output you know, quickly and measure it? How are you able to foretell what's going to happen in the market in the next two to three months? Not even years, two to three months. So these are the basic challenges we are facing as Africans. And I'm asking myself, how can we leverage on technology to start solving for these basic, basic issues? Because what then happens is you start pulling people from the poverty into certain uh, disposable income levels and if those things happen then it means there is more money to be spent in the economy it spurs growth within the economy and there's more for everybody to be able to uh, sort of uh, uh, harness from that so for me at the basic level can we solve for challenges on financial inclusion can we solve for challenges of market inefficiencies can we solve for challenges on people just accessing basic services and we can leverage technology to do these things and then beyond that then now they start thinking about the big things about you know blockchain and crypto and all those things and then asking ourselves so have we when we've gotten our people out of either poverty or moved them to a different bracket of disposable income how do you then start now investing in them further via you know more better technology to expose to them to better platforms where they're able to trade you know interact and, and and find even services globally because if you go to the village you can't start speaking to them about we've created rails for payments in china they just want a rail that takes their tea to the market let's start fixing that first of all let's get them paid in real time in near real time if possible put the money in their pocket now they come out of the villages into the urban centers then now we start you know building other platforms that allow them to trade as small traders in the urban centers as you move up gradually as, as as a community so for me i always start from the basics interested in solving the basics as we graduate and take our people to the different levels of income and also now expanding now bringing them into newer technologies that the global space is talking about we talk about payments, we talk about lending, we talk about uh, savings and all those things. But we're not speaking about the real challenges that people are facing. I'll give an example. Today in the education sector, which is worth uh, $4 billion annually, we've got fees default of 9 billion Kenya shillings annually. Meaning parents have got a shortfall of 9 billion Kenya shillings annually in terms of paying school fees. This is money, this is uh, a, a hole that is being plugged in by educational entrepreneurs. Nobody is addressing that. Agriculture, for example, 32% of the GDP of Kenya, still 94% of transactions are happening on cash. Therefore, the many inefficiencies that we're seeing, the many efficiencies that we're seeing in terms of produce getting into silos in government. So every other year cycle, we've got a shortage of food and the Kenya government has to import, spending $2 billion a year importing staple food that can be grown. How do you then start getting produce to, uh, inputs to the market? So I would invite investors to look at broken, quote unquote, value chains like this and ask, which are the fintechs that are actually solving these challenges? Because if you're the person solving for that challenge, it means you get the greatest return from solving for these challenges. As opposed to looking at the best payments business, which is okay, and that's okay. But if you want to be there longer, get more returns. In a Greek, for example, the returns are margins are close to 20 to 25 percent when you solve the value chain problem. In payments, the margins are between one to two percent are shrinking further because of the competition. But you've got a Greek where you've got margins of 20 to 25 percent. If you're an investor, where would you want to go? Of course, when you go to a Greek health education, it's a more of a longer term play. Payments probably medium to short term. But when you look at it from a longer term perspective, and most of the investors that have come into this continent, especially in banking, insurance, healthcare, and all this, even in the hotel industry where we are right now, they look at it from a 10, 15, 20 year perspective. So if you look at those sectors in the economy from a 10, 15, 20 year perspective, it then means that you need to start looking at things like agriculture, which is the bedrock of our GDP, health, education sectors. For me, that is where I would advise people to look at.
I'm glad that we all survived COVID. <laughs> we are glad that in Africa it didn't really take us down. We were quite resilient and it speaks a lot you know to the African spirit and who we really are that we are a resilient people. And then it means then that we've got an opportunity then to rise up. Uh, as much as businesses were affected, the individuals still have the strength to move on and you can see after everything has opened up everything everybody is coming back to business wanting to do more wanting to do better putting in a lot of time and effort uh, to get the businesses back up so it's a really exciting time uh, to be here and to be in a space where there's a lot of attention uh, from uh, globally there's a lot of attention by government sometimes a little bit negative but all the same it's attention <laughs> it means there's something interesting happening in there So the question for us is how do we then drive the conversation towards value? How do we create collaborations that actually generate value, generate revenue for all of us? And most importantly, let us always do the right thing. Uh, at times where there's opportunity, a uh, great opportunity to pursue something, uh, people want to be a little bit cheeky to get a quick buck. I think it has always been a long term play. If we want Kenya to remain as the tech central for Africa, and to still have all this global uh, uh, light shed on us i think uh, we need to maintain high levels of integrity in terms of, of what we build in terms of how we interact and how we do business we need to make sure that uh, we are always compliant in terms of regulation and just generally in terms of the investment that is coming into uh, the country and into the continent let us make sure that we actually show returns for this investment because that is the only way we can prove that we are worth what we are talking about